Sick of Isolation. Watched everything on Netflix. Miss your friends. Then it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the Loyola College Variety Hour. And here's your host, Michael O'Keefe. Well, hello everyone, good evening, and welcome to the Loyola College Variety Hour this evening, live across Facebook and YouTube. Hello to our wonderful community at Loyola College and anyone else that may have stumbled across tonight's broadcast. For those of you that are new to us, we are a Catholic co-educational secondary school located about 20 kilometres northeast of Melbourne, Victoria, and we are currently in a stay at home stage four lockdown. We're in a second wave of the coronavirus, uh, though it is on the mend, I think we're getting a little bit uh, better numbers each day, which is fantastic. So we thought we'd do this little show for everyone at home uh, who might be sick of watching Netflix and not much else to do. So a big hello to everyone watching and thank you so much for joining us. Well, tonight we've got a big show ahead with lots of special guests. Very shortly, we're going to speak to a Year 7 student. Uh, like all our Year 7s, she's actually been at home doing remote learning more than she has been on campus. But she has a big voice and she's going to hit us with an Adele number. That's coming up very, very shortly. We've got a book review tonight. Lane Walker from Year 10 is going to share her latest read and uh, give you some tips and advice on uh, what to read coming up very shortly. We've got a quiz this evening and our school is celebrating its 40th birthday. So all the questions are about the number 40. So you can just have a go at home and see whether or not you know those answers. We're going to uh, touch base with a student who last year blew people away with her performance as grandma in the award nominated Adams Family. Hayley Keating's going to join us and also tell us how it is being at home with three brothers while doing remote learning. And in our second half hour, we're going to have class of 2018, Sarah Catania join us. Uh, Sarah is a country singer. She's performed at Tamworth at the Country Music Festival. She's currently studying music and has been mentored by some of the biggest stars in the country scene in Australia. So we are very, very excited, plus a whole lot more. So thank you so much tonight for joining us. And let's chat now to our first guest. Well, as I said in the intro, she has a big voice for only a year seven. She is a member of the cast of Mary Poppins, the show that has yet to uh, make its way onto the stage, but I'm sure she will get there. And as I said, has not been at school for very long. But would you please welcome to the show this evening, uh, Matilda Kelly. Good evening, Hi. Matilda. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm going very, very well. And how is lockdown going for you at home? I mean, um, obviously I've been here for a very long time and uh, now that I've gotten into the gist of things and I've sort of made my own routine, um, it's not all bad, it's got its perks. And how many people at home each day with you? Um, my mum is a essential worker at the hospital, um, so she is at work, but my dad is working at home and with me and my brother. Oh, that's great. Well, it's so I'm so glad to have you on the show this evening. And a funny little story, I was sharing this with you the other day, but at Loyola, of course, uh, in, this, in year seven, you do six months of dance and six months of drama. And so at the beginning of this term, I got a new year seven drama class and let my first semester drama class go. Uh, and I have a student teacher at the moment who is taking that class. So I haven't really looked at who's in the class. I've been watching my student teacher do her work and, and giving her some feedback. And I look down the list and you're actually in my drama class. I should have, yeah. <laughs> but we've yet to speak because uh, I think I take back over the class next week. So I can't wait to see what you produce there. Now you're going to sing a song for us tonight. It's a big Adele song. Tell us what you're singing. 
I am singing When We Were Young by Adele. All right, so I'm going to let you get ready. Uh, ladies and gentlemen at home, this is Matilda Kelly. She's only in year seven singing the Adele big hit When We Were Young. All right, Matilda's just getting her music ready. This is this is live. You can tell now it's absolutely live because these things happen in a live show. How are we going, Matilda? Are we all good? I got it now. Okay, over to you. Thanks. you do from the way you talk to the way you move and everybody here is watching you kiss you feel like home you like a dream come true but if by chance you're here alone I've been by myself all night long Hoping you're someone I used to know You look like a movie You sound like a soul My God, this reminds me Of when we were young Do we not? 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, Matilda Kelly. Well done, Till. Fantastic. Uh, wonderful singer. How long have you been singing for? Um, I've pretty much been singing all my life. Like, just... I've, yeah, I've just, I really love it. So. And you're excited about Mary Poppins? Yeah, I'm so excited um, to get back into it when we can. So. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight and singing that beautiful song. That's Matilda Kelly, ladies and gentlemen. Only Year 7. Keep an eye on her, on her in future years. Thanks for joining us, Matilda. Thank you so much thank for you. having me. Thanks. Matilda Kelly, big voice, only Year 7. Huge. Going to be a star in the next few years at Loyola College. Keep an eye on her. All right, coming up next, we're going to have a little bit change of pace for those of you who like your reading. All right, when I was putting this show together, I put a big call out for any type of uh, piece of variety that, that we could put into this show. I think I was sort of inspired by the days of Hey Hey It's Saturday and Don Lane show in Melbourne tonight. And this young woman from Year 10 said to me, hey, um, let's go with a book review. And I thought, fantastic, because I think most people have watched everything there is to watch on Netflix. So it's good to maybe uh, curl up with a good book. Would you please welcome to the show from Year 10, Lane Walker. Good evening, Lane. Hi, sir. How are you? I'm very, very well. And how are you doing in ISO? Because you, like Year 7s, have been home for a lot of the year. How's it treating you? Um, well, I can't say that I enjoyed coming in for one period um, a day for a lot of the, for my VC. Yes. Um, that was rather inconvenient. And then I yeah. spent the rest of the day in jail at school. So. Ah, was... uh, yes, yes. In the room with, uh, with the students who need to be at school. It's very quiet, yeah. isn't it, up there? Fantastic. Now, do you do a lot of reading? Um... Well, I was actually going to address that. I've read about six books this year and four wow. of them were for school. Wow. But and usually I would read. Just been a bit distracted this year. Okay. <laughs> so. All right. Well, you've read um, a great book. So why don't you tell us all about it? Um, yeah. So I suggested doing a book review because I figured that we were all pretty bored in quarantine. And, I mean, the whole point of this show is you know, to change things up a little. So today I'll be reviewing Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. Now, as I said, I've only read six books this year, and of the two that I read in my own free time, one of them was Catch-22. So that sort of tells you already how good I think it is. Um, my friends are watching this, and they're probably going to spam me with text messages berating me for talking yet again about Catch-22 because I could talk about this book for several days, which makes me sound like a huge nerd, but, you know, I'll admit I am a huge nerd for this book. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, despite how big it is, the book is actually really good, as I've said before. Um, if you like books about heroism, camaraderie, and war, this is not the book for you. Um, no, our protagonist, Captain John Yossarian, is actually one of the first famous anti-heroes to exist, um, which basically just means he does stuff for himself. So he's very selfish, and he does good things, and they just happen to benefit other people. But really, he's just trying to save himself. Now, the plot is difficult to explain. That's kind of the whole point of the book. Um, given its, you know, chaos and disordered retelling. But at its most bare essential, it's a story about a guy, Captain John Yossarian, trying to escape the war, even if it seems like the whole world is against him and trying to kill him. Now, after what starts as a light-hearted, fun adventure of Yossarian complaining about the Germans, it slowly deteriorates, and we learn that Appleby has flies in his eyes, Yossarian has what is almost jaundice, but not quite jaundice, 
and that Colonel Cathcart keeps raising the number of missions that the Bombardiers have to go on before they can go home. Now, despite all these terrible things, Catch-22 is still a hilarious book that will break your heart and probably hurt your ribs a million times over. So, while some people will say that the book's long or chaotic, I still love it and I'd highly recommend it for anyone, even if they don't usually enjoy reading. Okay, and so what would you give it out of five? A six. Oh wow, it's <laughs> it's a good book. And is it yep. for is it for all ages? How young do you think um, it sort of cuts off? Would our U sevens be okay to read it? You think? I mean, I read it in I think I read it in about year eight. Okay. For the first time, um, so, but like I've always read like yeah. more mature books so i'd probably say like maybe a mature year nine could read it okay you know? and what are you reading right now or have you got a book coming up um well actually i'm reading one of my english books right now the road right. but i will but be reading i'm definitely right. going to read this week <laughs> great and uh well a big shout out to all your english teachers who are uh trying to teach english over the internet so Big shout out to them. Hey, thanks so much, Lane, for joining us this evening. We'll get people to go out and buy that book. It's Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. Thanks for coming on the show this evening. Thanks for having me. Thank you. That was Lane Walker from Year 10 giving us a book review. Hey, coming up next, we are going to be chatting uh, to a person that many know already because she is a great, great performer. Um, but before we do that, I actually want to have a bit of a chat to you about some of our house charities. See, each year Loyola students do a walk for others to raise money for their six house charities. Now, we're not too sure what the walk is going to look like this year. It might be a virtual walk. We might be able to walk around our school at some point later in the year. But our students are still doing a fantastic effort in raising money. And the first charity I want to speak about is the Jesuit Social Services. Now, Jesuit Social Services provides support for people in communities who are disadvantaged, particularly in the areas of justice and crime. So certainly helping people who are getting in trouble with the law and coming out the other side and giving them support there. And of course, mental health and well-being. All these things are really, really important at the moment. Check out this little video uh, about what Jesuit Social Services do. Being young and just released from custody with no place to call home, no money and no friends is a terrible place to be. Which is why in 1977, a young Jesuit in training opened a hostel in Hawthorne to support the young people who needed it most. And so Jesuit social services began. But the hostel only had room for eight people and the number of young people needing support kept growing. So we grew too. We learned that people's experiences were part of a much bigger picture of struggling communities, fractured families and social isolation. People needed housing and help to find training and employment. They needed support with parenting and social connection and help to cope with trauma, mental illness and substance abuse. But above all, they needed the most challenging and the most human thing of all, relationship. Over 40 years, we've sought out the most disadvantaged and vulnerable people in our community to offer them support and hope. We've expanded from Melbourne, across Victoria and into New South Wales and the Northern Territory. And time and time again, we've made the offer. There's a place for you here, if you want it. In 1977, there were eight young people living in four flats. In 2017, through more than 20 different programs, over 5,000 people received support from us. We're creating safer communities and providing people with pathways to education and employment. We're building diverse, harmonious communities where people feel they belong and we're helping people improve their mental health and well-being. We believe in a world where all people are supported to be their best. That's why we're building a just society. Build a just society with us. www.jss.org.au Okay, Jesuit Social Services, they do amazing work and it's the Mannix House at Loyola that supports this amazing charity. Now, if you would like to donate to our Walk for Others this year, the website is right there, 2020loyolawalk.raisley.com. Now, I just checked before we're sitting on 
$13,949. So it would be great by the end of uh, this variety show tonight that we could click over that $14,000, if not maybe $15,000. Our goal as a school is $30,000 this year, so we really do need your support. And all six of our charities are certainly pouring their money into those that need it at the moment due to COVID-19. So these are the most vulnerable people here in Australia that need this money. So please uh, generously support the Loyola Walk there. The website is there for you. And uh, you can do a search uh, for a student that you know at the school. You can search for a house or even a mentor that you might like to donate to. So that is the Loyola Walk for others. Okay, coming up very shortly, we're gonna chat to a young woman who blew everyone away last year in Adam's family as Grandma Adams. Okay, so some of you out there would have seen the show, the college production last year of The Adams Family. And this show is still talked about by a lot of people because it received multiple nominations at the Guild Awards. They're like the Tony Awards for community and school theater. In fact, the most awards uh, of any other Catholic school in Melbourne. So it was a fantastic show. And one of the stars of the show was Hayley Keating. She played uh, Grandma Adams. And for those of you that forgot what it was like, I've got a little clip to show you right now. All right, welcome to the show, Hayley Keating. Hi, how's it Hi, going? Hi, good, how are you? I'm really good, thanks. So glad to have you on the show, and it was so good watching that back. It's been just over a year now since the Adams Family. How are you feeling? We, we, didn't, we haven't had a show this year. How are you feeling about it all? Oh, I'm really upset um, <laughs> that I can't get to do the one thing I love doing um and especially at Loyola um yeah and I can't wait to uh Mary Poppins next year it's going to be great so everyone should come see it I'm so excited so pumped so uh you are at home you've been home like a lot of our students how have you found lockdown I mean it's been all right I mean it's has its negatives and positives um I'm really trying to focus on the positives. Uh, in our household, we do three things, three activities. We do a lot of walks. Um, very uh, fortunate to be living um, in a house that's backing onto um, parkland. So we walk out our back gate and we can walk around um, on the footpaths. Uh, second, a lot of Netflix, a lot of shows. Um, uh, enjoy. Uh, the 100 and um, I watched Friends and then we've also been playing a lot of board games uh, yeah and have you got a favorite board game well <laughs> in our house um, board games get really competitive I'm not playing um, this one game ever again <laughs> um, but I do love risk yeah. okay great now you are uh, well, I, I mean, I think you're an all-round performer, but would would you say dancing is probably your, your number one there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I've been dancing since I was two, so really young. Uh, yeah, and I, I love it. Um, I'm actually uh, really thankful that I can still um, be dancing um, from home. Um, my dance school has gone online and we do um, Zoom meetings and do dance classes. 
Now, give your dance school a plug because we have done some work with them before. Tell us uh, who your dance school is. Uh, yes, um, my dance school is Melbourne Dance Theatre. They are in Bundura. Best school ever. Um, such a nice community, um, such a big family, and everyone's so welcoming, so nice, and so supportive. Yeah, and they're just around the corner from Loyola College. So um, if you need a dance school, this could be the one, though we don't get any money for what I just said, but uh, we, uh, we have had a good relationship with them in the past. What's your favourite style of dancing? Okay, so I get this one asked a lot. Um, I don't have a favourite style. I love ballet. I love jazz. Um, I love tap as well. It, I, dance is just for everybody and um, it makes me so happy. Uh, yeah. Now, I've got, um, now we've, we've talked a little bit about Adam's family, but let's go a little bit deeper. I've got a clip here for people at home to watch for you in the scene. So to set this, uh, to set this scene up, uh, we're at the dinner table. And those that don't know the musical Adam's family, it is all about uh, Wednesday Adam's meeting a boy who's from a normal family. So it's very Romeo and Juliet. The two families try to get together. And this is their first big dinner together. And Wednesday is hoping that it will all turn out quite normal, but it just goes bananas. And you contribute to that, well, your character did, uh, with Grandma. So we're gonna have a look at this little clip right now. There's a couple of 90 year old hotties out there just waiting to chow down on a Grandma sandwich. <laughs> Full disclosure. I just peed. We should have put you down years ago. Well, there we are. The uh, the famous line, I just peed, uh, that the audience just loved. Uh, if you've just joined us on the Variety Hour, we are talking to Hayley Keating, who is one of our performing arts stars at Loyola College. Hayley, uh, how did you find playing Grandma in The Adams Family? Oh, it was a blast. I loved it so much. This character is so weird. You know, she's just so out there and everyone just cracks up when she comes on stage. Um, I loved playing her. I wish I could do it again. Uh, but yeah, it was great. Um, I was just showing I was just showing more of your uh, your your vision there. Um, what was your favorite uh, part of the show? My favorite part. Oh, there were so many favorite parts. Um, everyone um, in the cast was amazing. Um, they absolutely blew everybody away. Uh, one of my favourite parts uh, for playing Grandma um, was definitely coming on stage and singing um, uh, Let's All Talk About Love or that song. Yes. And, and, yeah. and, we, and we, uh, we put that song in especially for you because uh, it was in the Broadway edition, but not uh, on, the, on the version we were doing. So we snuck that in. Um, so it, it was heaps of fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was the best. Um, uh, alongside Tim Bland and... Um, well, it was an amazing yeah. cast, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Really super cast. Now, let's talk about life after Loyola. I know you're only young, but have you got any plans of what you might like to do after year 12? Um, I'm not totally sure what I'm going to do, but that's like most um, kids are today. And um, I'm definitely searching, um, looking for a way to go. Definitely down performing arts and... Um, yeah, I'd love to do some dance, acting and singing. So wherever I can do that, that would be the best. 
Well, we wish you all the luck. Thank you for everything that you've contributed so far to the Loyola community. And we will see you again, I'm sure, on stage. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. That is Hayley Keating right there, another fantastic performer at Loyola College. And if you'd like to see her perform right now and not have to wait till the next time we're out of lockdown, uh, check out our YouTube and Facebook page for Live at the Inigo, a concert we did about three weeks ago, uh, which when we were just before we went into stage four again, might have been a bit longer than that now. Uh, and Haley is one of the many performers who performed on that night. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the quiz. So if you're at home and you want to have a bit of a competition against the people around you, get ready because it's time for our quiz. <laughs> All right, it is quiz time, ladies and gentlemen, and a big shout out to Anne Musgrove at Loyola College who has supplied me with tonight's questions. So all correspondence to her uh, if we get it wrong. But the theme tonight is the number 40. Uh, so let's go. It's going to be pretty rapid fire and the questions hopefully will come up on the bottom of the screen. There we go right there. Uh, and the question is... We've got nice little dual vision there. Uh, what gemstone is traditionally associated with the 40th anniversary? What gemstone is traditionally associated with a 40th anniversary? Which, of course, Loyola is attempting to celebrate this year under lockdown. All right, the answer is ruby. Ruby is the answer there. All right. And I know some of you will argue that there is a uh, there's a new version of this because marriages aren't lasting as longer, but we just went with the traditional. All right, question two. Whose family spent 40 days on a big boat watching the rain pour down according to the biblical book of Genesis? 40 days on a big boat. What is the family's name? And the answer is, of course, Noah. Noah's family. Sure, that should have been a pretty easy one for most of our Loyola crew. All right. Many people have a can of WD-40 spray handy in their garages. What do the letters WD stand for? I didn't even know the answer to this when Anne sent me the questions. What do those stand for? The answer to that is water displacement. Water displacement. Makes sense. All right, question four. What is the 40th day of the year? What is the 40th day of the year? I know for some of us it feels like we're up to day 7,000 for the 2020. Uh, but the answer is Feb 9. February 9 was what you needed there. Okay, question five. What word comes after 40 to complete a phrase describing a short sleep? not often not in bed what word comes after 40 to describe what a lot of us have been doing on the weekend i think because there's not much else to do it's of course 40 winks is the answer there okay question six the temperature of minus 40 is the only temperature which has the same number when measured on the celsius centigrade scale and what other scale still commonly used in the USA? So minus 40, this is good. It's National Science Week this week. So this is the perfect question for the scientists at home. So when we get down to minus 40 uh, Celsius, it is also minus 40 watt. And of course is Fahrenheit, named after Mr. Fahrenheit himself in the 18th century. Of course, us here in Australia know how ridiculous the Fahrenheit system is, but hello to all our friends who are watching tonight in the United States. All right, question seven in, uh, what collection of stories would you find the folk tale, Ali Baba and the 40 Thieves? We had Lane Walker on earlier talking uh, books with us. So all our uh, book lovers out there might know this one. 
uh, 1001 Nights or Arabian Nights is the answer for that one. All right, question eight. Element 40 on the periodic table is zirconium. It is given the number 40 because it has 40 of what kind of particles in its nucleus? So another good science one for National Science Week. Zirconium, what is inside the nucleus? There are 40 protons. Protons, fantastic. Uh, thank you to those who are contributing to our uh, YouTube chat. None of you have got one of the answers correct yet. Uh, in a game of tennis, how many points have been won by a player whose score is reported as 40? How many points must you have scored to be on 40? Uh, the answer is three, because it goes 15, 30, and 40. Anne tells me it used to be 45, so it made sense. It was 15, 30, and 45, um, but they shortened it to get down to the one uh, uh, less um, number there. So that's great. All right, number 10, last question. What season of the liturgical calendar year lasts for 40 days, not counting Sundays? A nice give me at the end. I'm sure we all got Lent. The answer was Lent. Hey, that was our question on the uh, quiz on the number 40. <laughs> All right, thank you everyone. I hope you enjoyed the quiz. Next week on the quiz, it's going to be Melbourne. The topic is going to be Melbourne. So if you know lots of stuff about our great city, get on the quiz next week. Okay, it's time to have a bit more of a chat about one of our charities tonight. It's Macaulay Community Services for Women. And I think more than ever, and we heard some announcements from the government today, more than ever, this is a charity that does need our help. We do know that family violence has been on the increase during the COVID-19 pandemic. And so these are the people that help those who need to find a home when theirs is unsafe. Family violence is now the main reason for homelessness in Australia. And the face of homelessness is now typically a mother with a child leaving violence. Often there is simply nowhere to go to be safe. Getting back on your feet can be hard, especially for those dealing with mental illness, addiction or poverty. Macaulay Community Services for Women is there to help when women need it most. We're there to support women when they take the first steps. We are by their side at the most difficult okay. time. Is in my lives. volume good with my mic? We're there for them because no okay. one should have to experience family violence and homelessness. We help women to find work, get legal help, and build new skills for a safer future. And we help their children deal with their trauma. Without support, Many women feel they have no choice but to return to violence. With Macaulay's help, they can build a future where they flourish, not just survive. All right, Macaulay Services for Women do a great job. And of course, they are part of Macaulay House. And you could donate to them by 2020loyalawalk.raisley.com. Dot com and I will give you an update at the end of the video whether we've been able to get over our little goal for this evening. So if you haven't donated yet, that is the place to donate. Okay, uh, we are now going to speak to a former student of Loyola College. She is class of 2018. Her name is Sarah Catania, and she's been singing country. Well, she could tell us for how long shortly, but but certainly for a very long time. Uh, now, I've got some vision of her here at uh, in Tamworth performing. Now, it is taken on a mobile phone a few rows back, so the quality of vision isn't great, but the sound certainly is. So here's a little snippet of what Sarah does uh, in Tamworth, and then we'll be back with her in a moment. Bye. 
right, so that is a little bit of Sarah Catania. And Sarah joins us right now. Good evening, Sarah. Hi, how are you? Going very, very well. And how are you? I'm good. I'm good. That's it's good. I've just, I'm so glad to have you here. And I'll just get you in the right spot on my computer. This is totally live tonight. Everyone knows. So excited to have you here. And um, class of 2018, does it feel like you've only been gone a year and a half? No. Oh, it just it feels like it's been a lifetime, but it was also like a week ago. You know what I yeah. mean? Like so much has happened, but it also feels like it was yesterday. Now, I'm going to ask you a little bit about your um, background in country singing in a moment, but I did want to just highlight that you're not just a singer. You've done a fair bit of acting in your time. Of course, at Loyola, you played the, the Wicked Witch in Wizard of Oz in 2017 and then Taylor McKessie in High School Musical at 2018. Great memories from, from those shows. Yeah, of course. The musicals are a massive highlight of um, mine and I know a lot of other people's time at Loyola. So much fun with everyone, just hanging out with your friends. You get to perform on an amazing stage. Yeah, massive highlight. So, how have you been going in lockdown first? I should ask you that. Been going good, actually. Um, I've had a lot of time, which is good, that I don't usually have to just get some new like projects kick-started, do a lot of writing, um, co-writing and all that fun stuff and get my uni work done on time as well, which is nice. <laughs> so you're in a second year of a music degree? Yeah, performance bachelor degree, yeah. Great. That's fantastic. Now, what else have you been doing since leaving Loyola? Um, well, I've been getting my degree done, I've been working at KFC on the side, singing, teaching, um, and then just doing a lot of songwriting, um, singing at the Tamworth Country Music Festival, as you said earlier, um, just trying 